right, guys, this is the final four minutes of this war. 82 to 84. This is MLCW. I was watching these attacks unfold. I'm going to tell you guys, this is one of the most lit wars uh, that I have been a part of and that I have seen in a very long time. I am absolutely not exaggerating, you guys. Uh, coming down with just the last five minutes, having a 10v10 triple. Uh, FML has really struggled with 10v11s. War Generals made some last-minute calls uh, to send Heisenberg, one of our Town Hall 11s, to ensure at least getting the two stars onto the 11s that we were really, really struggling with. And this is a live dip uh, from Jeff. Uh, he's hitting number 10, doing it clone bone style. Uh, we will see, I think there's gonna be maybe a minute left once this attack ends to see where we're at. Actually something I'm telling you guys has been red hot this war. They have a 10v10 triple. They went 100% on dips as well. So far this attack is looking very good uh, for Jeff on this one. Does still have a rage up as well. I see that he cloned a hound as opposed to the loons. That could cause some problems here on the back end. But like I said guys, this war has been so close. Uh, really coming to the wire. I know actually something has been struggling uh, a fair amount in Premier, but I'm telling you, uh, this war, I don't know if this is a, a, a turn of the tides uh, for actually something, but they have put on an absolute show. And so has FML. We had quite a few scouts. Uh, nines really, really performed this war. Uh, we will go ahead and check out a couple attacks once the war ends. Hopefully we're on the victory side of this war. It's It, it looks like it's close, but with that raid spell, he still has all these dragons up as well. Uh, this is definitely going to be a triple go ahead and check the corners okay all is looking good so we're kind of doing a, la a final five minutes of the war and then we'll, we're going to go ahead and check out a few of the 10v10 triples fml has had three uh so far so gg right here to big bear jeff wrap it up with a six pack uh we did go perfect uh perfect on our 11 dips okay here we have another one all right, we have Quatch, a.k.a. Goose, coming in here trying to get this double, you guys. Uh, looks like he's doing it with a bowler smash, bringing four golems on this attack. Uh, this would be money right here. If we double this base, this is going to be money. I didn't even have a, a chance. I didn't know if it was going to be full uh, for spectators. I didn't even look at the score, but I guarantee you, once this attack is over, uh, that is it. You know, we're going to find out if FML walks away victorious. Uh, we will go ahead and see. So he comes, has his wall breakers coming down here. Nice funnels on the sides. Uh, doing it with, with brimstone, bringing four golems. Here comes the CC bowlers. Has a nice funnel over there on the upper left-hand side. It's looking like all these troops are going to head straight in. Uh, we'll go ahead and see if he has percent. Uh, nothing for the back end, so it's going to be all up to this huge uh, push right here, this huge kill squad coming in here. Uh, Queen is locked onto the Golem. Uh, if she can take it out, and hopefully that loon goes down to the poison, she should be able to lock onto the Hound. Still has ability. Looks like he's going to come up short uh, on percent. Uh, I'm not sure. Is he going to get this Town Hall? If he can get those pups down, what's the life of the Town Hall? Doesn't look like he's going to get it. Looks like the Expo is going to lock on. So very nice try uh, to Quatch, aka Goobs on this one, but do not worry, we do have a 10v10 triple from him that I will be showing you guys once this is over. So that is it, oh my goodness. 83 to 84 was the final. Uh, they do have one more attack to use. So ask you something, walking away with the victory, I will say in all confidence, a surprising victory considering how they have performed in Premier, in all fairness. Uh, but what I will tell you also in all fairness, they really put on a show, like I said, they were very successful, uh, 10 to 11. They were able to clear three out of the four Town Hall 11s. We'll see how this one ends. So they definitely outperformed FML on 10 to 11s. And uh, they had a 10v10 triple and went 100% on their dips. Uh, where we struggled was the 10v11 game, uh, only able to clear one. Uh, one of actually some of this Town Hall 11s with our Town Hall 10s uh, came up short on the other ones. This is looking GG right here. 
Uh, so they were able to clear all four. Let's see, did still have the Archer Queen ability. She is locked onto a Hound, though. It's actually only going to be one star. Those Valks ate it on that giant bomb, uh, plus that Expo and that Wizard Tower right there. So they're actually only able to clear three of our 11s. Just has some wall breakers in the camp. Uh, so what a performance put on by both. I'm telling you guys, even though... Uh, we got the defeat. I'm going to tell you, this war reminded me of how the arranged wars were even before CWL, MLCW, uh, when we were just doing arranged wars on the weekends. This is the kind of hype that wars had back in the day. And again, even though it was a defeat, this war was absolutely lit. Uh, especially, it was absolutely lit, especially towards the end of the war. This is uh what many of us always crave in a war like i said did come up on the losing side i do have some incredible replays uh to show you guys but that was the last final five minutes of the war and it gets kind of crazy so if you look at it right here uh these bases right here heisenberg uh did go he, he was trying to get an 11 v 11 triple if we look at the war events look at all these attacks just in the last few minutes of the war uh heisenberg end up only getting a one star as opposed to going for the safe two star let's go ahead and look at percentage and we got them on percentage so not sure what happened there definitely could have gotten the victory if heisenberg uh went for a safe two star as opposed to the guaranteed three but we at the end of the day we didn't know how they were going to perform on this 10 v 11 hit as we can see uh jeff's base did defend uh the two star attempt by their number five but i do have a couple 10 v 10s to show you guys actually a few we have three 10 v 10 what side of the map we're on okay here we go right here starting off uh godsend this was a fresh hit you guys uh godsend doing it with a clone bone we can see these offset ad's on the back end of the base you're gonna see this attack is gonna end in a minute and 40 seconds and we'll see how he trims this base uh, notice he has a dragon funneling over there at nine o'clock dropping down the queen she's gonna be trimming this side uh more for the funnel but she's gonna go ahead and pick up a couple archer towers which is huge huge value uh so not only getting rid of some point defenses but also uh trimming and getting this funnel set for the dragons king doing the same thing on the other side of the base notice in his spell comp he had a few rages and he has that clone or he had a couple rages on the entry notice he has a camp hound coming down at about seven o'clock uh with about six camp loons he drops down uh double hasting them into these two ad's here comes the other hound followed uh by the clone spell uh so again getting uh what is it seven lo no six loons cloned uh, the sixth or the seventh one coming out of the CC and just completely shred that three o'clock AD compartment and still has a few dragons up as well. Balloons completed work, didn't even lose any of those level seven uh, max loons that came out of the CC when he dropped that clone spell. So very, very nice attack uh, from Godson. That was actually the first 10v10 of the war right there. Uh, so this was a dip. This was, okay, this was the other one. This attack, uh, if we look at the war events, this was in the last five minutes of war. Uh, we got Mike going to be doing an insane queen charge Lalo. Wait till you see how many balloons uh, he has left at the end of this. Does have eight wall breakers going to be coming out of the camps. Has four rages, three haste, and one poison. Uh, goes ahead and drops down a couple loons to grab that archer tower. Uh, so not only getting that point defense out of the way, but setting the funnel as he does want his queen to walk down. Look at all this value right here. Uh, already going to be eliminating a few point defenses, a wizard tower, an air defense, an expo, the enemy queen, the CC. And she's even going to be taking out these defenses over here as well. So just going to get an insane amount of value from this queen charge. You can see he's got a little kiwi walk going uh, just to help the queen out. Goes ahead and drops down a leading rage. Uh, to help the queen and uh, that same rage he also went ahead and dropped a couple wall breakers to pop that wall he has been doing a double layer wall break here comes the next group uh, wall is popped right there goes in pops the king ability he still has a couple wizards uh, so getting really good value all over the map so far 
uh, queen is actually locked onto the hound right out of the range of the enemy queen. So very, very nicely done there. Uh, just going to be working through these pups. I did drop a couple wizards down to help the enemy queen out. Uh, she's going to go ahead and lock on a little queen on queen action like we always love. Uh, so right there drops down the third rage for this charge is going to have a rage and a few haste to help his balloons out. But you can see that the air defense pathing uh, or the defense pathing leading to these air defenses is really, really prime for this air attack right here. Uh, Hound and loon's going to be starting from one end of the base to the other. Starting at three o'clock, they're going to be pathing up to three or excuse me, starting at three o'clock, pathing up to 12 ending over at nine o'clock goes in pops the queen ability so again just got amazing value right there even gets that wizard tower right there in the core just to help these loons uh path right into that air uh that inferno tower and the last defense to go down is going to be uh this air defense over there at nine o'clock but again look at all the balloons left had that nice raid spell right towards the end there swagging a loon uh for a cleanup very, very nicely done uh, from Mike on that attack right there. So that was the second Tevi 10 right there. We'll go ahead and times four this. I thought I was already on times four. Okay, so very, very nice hits. So that was two 10 V10s uh, right there. And this one uh, also, this is actually uh, Mike right here. Uh, gonna be doing a Sui Hero Lalo, uh, bringing 29 balloons uh, to this attack. Hero starting on the other end of the base, gonna be eliminating some splash defense and some point defense as well. It does have a skelly for the queen, uh, has a heal, two rage of poison, and four haste. Uh, so going very, very spell heavy. Uh, damn near using pretty much all of his spells uh, for the Lala portion. Uh, so goes ahead and breaks the uh, his heroes in and really, again, grabbing those defenses and the key is setting that defense funnel uh, so the loons path where he wants them to on this base. Uh, so just got really, really good value limiting pretty much that entire uh, 9 to 10 o'clock compartment up there. Starting up at 12 o'clock, dropping on the first hound and uh, just peppering in these loons on these defenses. Going to be hasting that huge wad right in the first inferno tower. Uh, goes in and drops down his second camp. Uh, second camp hound followed by some more loons goes in drops a leading rage uh, where he's going to be dropping the poison on the queen and the skelly spell to go ahead and take her out so uh, goes ahead and does very very good execution uh, completing that part and look at all these loons left up down here as they're gonna be raging right into that inferno tower and notice he still has a heal spell so these balloons can work through these expos and take out the ever deadly uh, wizard tower and again swagging one loon for cleanup also has three minions that he's bringing along as well to help the pups out uh, so very, Mike had an insane uh, war getting two 10 v 10s this war and godsend as well so just a huge shout out uh, from the 10 v 10 guys unfortunately we were not able to close it out uh, as far as our 10 v 11s go but we were able to uh, beat them on percent uh, again going for that 11 v 11 triple as opposed to uh, securing a guaranteed two star definitely would have swayed uh, the the victory in our favor. But huge shout out to everybody at From Molten Lava. Huge shout out uh, to everybody. Ask you something. Getting the best of FML. Uh, pretty much at this point in time, uh, Ask you something definitely is From Molten Lava's kryptonite. Um, they have just figured out a way to beat FML war after war after war. But huge shout out. They definitely brought their A game to this war, picking up the victory uh, here. What is it in week? I believe this is week seven. Uh, could be wrong there. Week seven in the MLCW. Uh, just a war or two left before the playoffs kick off. And they obviously got the victory in this war. But that was the final five minutes. Want to show you guys some heavy hitter action. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS. And I'll see you in the very next video.